and welcome to my walkthrough of Jet Set Willy. The reason it's starting with a static screen is when I started recording the game I went straight into it and there you go. So I didn't leave enough room for an introduction so I thought I'd stick that screen in there to give a bit of buffer time at the start. I'm really really pleased with this walkthrough. It took me a long time to do it. This isn't a game that I could do back in the day. When I was a kid I never completed Willy, Jet Set Willy. Never even thought I'd ever be able to complete Jet Set Willy so I was really really pleased when I did this recording and managed to complete it. So the first thing I do in my walkthroughs is give a shout out and normally it's just to one person but this time I'm going to give a shout out to two different people. The first of those is Mike James from the Retro Gaming Roundup podcast. Mike is UK Mike in that podcast and I know that Jet Set Willy is his favourite game so I thought I'd give him a shout out. I gave his brother a shout out in one of my other videos so I thought I'd give Mike a shout out. The other shout out is to PlayStation Paul who subscribed to my channel and commented on my Manic Miner video that he thought with those skills I'd be able to complete Jet Set Willy. So thank you for that. I um, gave it a go and as you can see or as you will see I completed it Paul so thank you very much for that vote of confidence. So when I was practicing for this walkthrough, I actually started because I was doing the plane tips for the latest series of the Spectrum Show. I'm sure everyone who watches this also watches the Spectrum Show, and you'll know that in the latest series there's a plane tips, tips section, and that is done by myself. So I gave plane tips to certain rooms, like the Nightmare Room that we're in now, if you want me to describe what I've just done there to get through the Nightmare Room. Go and have a look at the latest episode of the Spectrum Show. But what happened was there were a few rooms and I did some practicing and worked out how to complete the room. And I just kept going. I kept looking through the rooms and doing them and doing them and doing them and working out which one to do next and how you could do them. And eventually I, I got to a point where I thought, you know what, I think if I give this a really good go, I can get through the entire game. But I must admit, this was the first attempt I had at recording a walkthrough of Jet Set Willy, and I was amazed at how well I did. There's a few lives I lose towards the end that are a bit silly, and I'll comment on them when I get to them. But the route I take is, in my mind, the route that lets you do the hardest rooms first. So the Nightmare Room was always a room I found really, really difficult. The Banyan Tree is another famously difficult room, although you don't have to transverse it to complete the game. And what you need to do is actually, well, do what I'm doing now and get up into the room above. At this point, it's probably a good point to mention that obviously you can't complete Jet Set Willy as it was originally released. So what I did was I found the original Software Projects Pokes, and there were four Pokes that Software Projects released for Jet Set Willy. And those four Pokes do the following things. For the Banyan Tree, they let you transfer transverse it as you've just seen so you can get to the the room above and take this route to the conservatory roof which brings me to the next change they removed one of the little men in the conservatory roof which means that you can't actually get all of the objects you wouldn't be able to get those n2 objects if they hadn't removed that man they fix the attic bug and the final pork moves an invisible object from the first landing to the hall and you'll see me pick that up later in the game. So this room that we're in now is the orangery, orangery or conservatory. And actually this is a hard jump in this room. You jumping under that orange coloured baddie is quite difficult. That's probably the hardest jump that I've done so far in the game. And as I said, the route that I'm going to take is the route that I think makes the game hardest. So I'll go down into the wine cellar and then through the Forgotten Abbey and under the drive and then out to the off license and up the mega tree. Now I think this is one of the hardest rooms in the game, the wine cellar. It's really, really difficult because if you get killed in this, you've got to kind of start again. And there's a lot of transversing to do. So, 
one of the tricks that I've just used there is the jumping vertically at so you can do a jump at the end point and you'll be guaranteed that you're going to jump at exactly the place you want to do. If you jump vertically and then press the direction you're facing and jump a, and keep your finger on jump then you'll go exactly where you want to. Now the trick in this room is to actually stand where I've just stood. So you can just jump straight over onto those two middle platforms from the right hand side if basically you're lined up with the top platform so that you'd be just just catching the last pixel on the top platform you'll see what I mean here when I stop so you want to stop there if I was on the top platform I'd just be on the top platform there that allows you to just jump straight over those platforms without having to adjust your jump in the middle of the platforms Now when I was practicing to do this game I actually wrote down every single room and a few tips and reminders for each room but I categorised the rooms as very hard, hard, medium and easy. And things, rooms like the bathroom where you first start was of course easy. This one I classified as very hard. And as you can see, you need to be careful. You you go from here through to the Forgotten Abbey. I always wondered how people found that, but once you're at the bottom there, there's no other way out. The clue is there isn't another exit to the room. If, if Matthew Smith had allowed you to exit to the room to the l left from the bottom, I think people wouldn't have found this this room here. Now this is another very hard room and the reason this is a very hard room is actually getting along the bottom. There are two difficult parts of this room. The first one is when you have to go on the top platform because that's a conveyor belt and you've got two moving monks on it and the bottom is difficult just because the monks move in such a pattern that they get very very close and it's difficult to know when to time you jump so you've really just got to learn it. So my tip for this is you actually jump over that first monk. If you jump up onto the platform and keep your finger on right you will just stay at the edge of the platform and you turn around and jump when that yellow monk gets underneath that last kind of baddie at the top, the kind of pumpkin head thing. And then you have to wait on the bottom until that red monk is following the yellow monk just as he was there and then I use that kind of pumpkin lantern that's in the middle as my marker so as you can see you can you can jump at certain points and you can just learn using that pumpkin head as a marker how far the blue and the green monks will come to either side of the screen of course we're in the security guard now and below here is the entrance to Hades you don't want to drop down into the entrance to Hades and the next room you come into is under the drive which is the hardest room in the game but not yet so this bit getting along the bottom is pretty easy actually you can just jump and jump and wait for the bird to come back across and jump and then you're at the tree root which is quite difficult actually trick on this room is to remember don't jump now let that head go down and back up again and then jump. As with Manic Miner, I think I think I remember saying in Manic Miner that when you play the game, there's, there's two kind of just general tips. One is don't panic. If you die or if anything goes wrong, you don't quite get into the right p position. Just don't panic. Bide your time and be patient. Actually, that's two. Don't panic and be patient. So, next bit coming up is the hardest part of the game. When you go back onto the drive, you're on a conveyor belt, you're moving to the left, and you've got to jump pixel perfect over the body. And I didn't do it there. And what happens if you don't do it, is you don't land on that platform. So if you jump too early, you hit the ceiling and bash your head, and you don't hit the platform. If you jump too late, you'll die. And that's it. That's the one. 
So I've only got three lives left now, and I've got the entire game to do. I've only got 20 items, and it's 83 to complete the game. Now this next jump's pretty hard as well, because if you don't get this right, you've got to be right on the edge, then you die too. Go up into the drive, and along to at the foot of the mega tree. And again, those objects on the bottom of there are pretty hard to get. Now, one good thing to remember is, if you stand directly under that second, what is it, Batman, or whatever he is, then he won't hit you on the head. The first one will, and the red one will, but the middle one won't. I think that's pretty self-explanatory from what I've done there. So, let's have some trivia. A few trivial facts about Jet Set Willy. It was written by Matthew Smith. I presume everyone watching this knows that. And released in 1984. Was released for lots of different platforms. The, the Spectrum first, of course. BBC... Commodore 64, I think Dragon, I think I think there were versions for the Amiga and the Atari ST as well. It, it it went on to lots of games and obviously now there's also games for versions for all kinds of things. Um, game Boy, Game Boy Advance, you name it, it's there. So you're off license. Again, actually, patience, patience is the key in this one. You just use the jump on the conveyor belt and go in the opposite direction to stay where you are technique and a few jumps and the trick to getting those la that last bottle or that bottle there the one I've just got is to um, turn around and jump back onto the conveyor belt and go the other way and that last bottle should be pretty easy now if you do this you'll go back through the next room, which of course is the bridge. And to do that, the other direction is quite easy actually, because that up and down body is quite easy to see. This direction, you've got to wait there. Wait there until that bird goes back the other way. And you d I think you have a pixel spare there. You don't have to be pixel perfect on the jump over the bridge. Obviously you've got to make sure you avoid that green body, but that's just a case of timing your jump right. Under the mega tree, you can just walk straight through. You can walk straight through this one in both directions, by the way. You never have to stop. And of course, when you go back through the security guard from this direction, you can do that without stopping as well. Which I'm fairly sure I do. So now we're going to do the mega tree. I used to think the mega tree was really, really difficult. It was difficult to get all the objects. But actually, there's none of these rooms really, really hard. I think the cuckoo's nest's probably the hardest. I think I put that in my very hard categorization when I categorize the rooms. But a lot of these ones, it's just a case of, a case of being patient. Now, unlike Manic Miner, I don't have a magazine article where Matthew Smith talks about this game and says something about each room, so I can't really pick out sound bites like I did. I did look for some interviews. And the only interview I ever found was on YouTube, actually, where he says anything about the game was where he was saying that the baddies in the forbidden, sorry, the Forgotten Abbey are, are monks, which is pretty obvious. And we're all inside the mega trunk and coming up to the cuckoo's nest. Now the cuckoo's nest trick with the cuckoo's nest is when you first go in there you you need to jump pretty much immediately so you jump over the bird uh, uh, the saw and turn around and jump again and then you'll avoid that arrow and jump up again and this doesn't have to be pixel perfect but you've got to time it right so you've got to follow the egg and jump up and get the bird and then turn around and get back down again the nest itself deadly I think all that green stuff's deadly the birds the eggs deadly, the saws deadly. And of course, Jet Set Willy had that pirate protection system where you got a little coloured cord card with the game and you had to type in the, the correct colour cords when you first started the game. Branch over the drive, one object to collect in this is quite easy, there's one little 
trick for this, which is coming back the other way. So that jump's pretty easy to make. This next one, you want to stand exactly... No, not there. There. When you jump, and then just time your jump. So you jump over that head, and you just land nicely on the other side. You don't hit your head off that green stuff, which will kill you. And again, you want to jump pretty much as soon as you come out of this room. Okay, and this room isn't too hard. Not collecting the objects. There is... when you come back into this room, from the next one, there is a little trick to that, but I'll explain that when we get there. Now, here again I explain about patience, you've got to wait there, because there's an arrow going to come any second. There it is. Because there was a follow-up to this game as well, which was Jet Set Willy 2, but that wasn't programmed by Matthew Smith. This room's not too hard either. Once you, once you know, once you've, you've kind of worked out the route and worked out how to do it, because if you make any silly mistakes, you die. And there's a lot of rooms. You've got 82 items. I'm not sure how, you, how many you have to get to do Manic Miner. And in a strange way, this game can lull you into a false sense of security. Because, unlike Manic Miner, where the rooms tend to get harder and harder and harder, so towards the end you're just concentrating continually. This, this game, you have some easier rooms. So it doesn't seem quite as difficult to do. As always with this, I mean, I'm doing this my way, it's the way I've worked out, but if anyone knows any easier ways or shortcuts, please feel free to, to comment and say, no, you can do that in an easier way. I'm always, I'm always up for hints and tips of how to do things easier. So when you come into this next room, it's interesting, because if you jump straight away, you die, and if you jump too late, you die. You've got to time it just right, you've got to walk a little bit and then jump. So you jump over the kind of sunflower and you jump over the... well, you jump before that arrow. Um, that technique for coming down from that room to inside the mega tr trunk is pretty obvious. You just you just drop and keep your finger on, right and jump. If you rewind the video and look at it, you'll, you'll see what I mean. Okay, now you see what I said, that guy in the middle doesn't hit you. Now this this is one where you've got to do vertical jumps. You've got to time it right, it's not too hard, it's not pixel perfect, but you do have to time that jump right. And as I said, the next room is the security guard, and you can just go through this and just time your jumps right. So keep your finger on left, and jump, and jump, and jump, and just have faith in the fact that if you do that right, you'll go straight through. The hole where the invisible object was moved to from the first landing, that was one of the software project porks. Ballroom East. I never like going underneath these heads. The three together and those well, two in particular always, always make me feel nervous. And this room. This room is about timing your jump right to get through this. Because your conveyor belt's going to the right. But if you jump in a, on a conveyor belt in one direction, keep your finger on that direction, you'll move through it. You'll keep going in that direction. What you've got to do there is stand there and time your jump right. Now, basically, when you start moving, that blue head will be in about the position it is when you start moving. When you jump. So what you want to do is you want to wait until the head hits the bottom and moves up, but time it as well so that when it's doing that, that rabbit is in a decent position to jump over, and that's what happens. You can time it like that. It takes a bit of practice, that. Here we go. Main, stitch, main kitchen, or the main stairway. This is one of the ones I described how to complete on the Spectrum Show. 
And actually, that's most of the really, really hard rooms done now. We've been through we've that route where you go through the banyan tree and then under the drive takes out the hard, really, really hard rooms early on, which is why you can see. I mean, that, that under the drive piece that I, I showed you and, and taught you how to do. I mean, I practiced this game a lot and I practiced that room a lot, and yet I still lost two lives in a row in that room. Only leaving me with three. Now, I remember when I was practicing, the kitchen was particularly difficult. This is one that Matthew Smith likens to the Amoebatron's Revenge and the Amoebatron's, Wacky Amoebatron's in Manic Minor. And it is quite similar, it's split over two screens. This is one of these sets of screens or screens where it's it's just easy to lose concentration and go wrong. None of the jumps, none, nothing's particularly hard in the game. One thing I'd say is remember that when you're towards the bottom, jump under the baddies in these vertical rooms, and when you're towards the top, the top jump over them. I know that sounds obvious, but sometimes you think, oh, I'll just jump over the top of this one when it's near the bottom, and it's just that extra bit of risk you want to avoid. I don't know if every, anyone's done a speedrun of this, but a speedrun of Jet Set Willy would be really, really difficult, because in my mind, one of the main things to do is to not panic and just take your time, because of the risk that you run in, in trying to do anything too quickly. When we go up here, we'll be back in the banyan tree. That seems like an awful lot of work for one object. Of course, one of the things that Jet Set Willy 2 did was fill in the gaps between the rooms. So, if you draw a map of this, you've got to kind of say, well, there's a gap there. When you come out of this room, you warp or jump or there's obviously some wrong corridor that's not shown in the game where you go between two rooms. So next room's the chapel. The trick here is to actually stay there. What you want to do is you want to jump over him and walk along and turn around and jump back over him. That lets you time your run up that stairway just right. Now that stairway is a conveyor belt that pulls you to the left, which makes timing walking up it particularly tricky. There you go. And then when you jump there you need to turn around quickly. Yeah. To avoid that big horrible ugly priest's head. I think that's one of the best sprites in the in the game that I've ever seen. And then you just walk walk down. And the way I used to do this was try and get jump through the stairway, but actually I just go to the left. And when you come into the back in the next room you just jump straight away. And then you can drop down. Now I'm gonna go up here. Now once you've done that, it's impossible to get back along there, so you have to go up the east wall. But you have to go up the east wall at some point to complete the game anyway. And you don't want to go straight up the east wall, because there's a couple of objects to collect further to the east of here. And the first one's in the hall, which is the next room, I think. That one there. Right, invisible object. You can get that object from at the top of the front door. I'm never sure what that's supposed to be. It's quite hard to see with that light blue background. Some of the objects you can see what they are. 
that's on your car. Now this jump's a hard one. Getting back along here, it's not really... You don't have to be pixel perfect or anything like that, but you need to time it pretty well. So you jump down and go over there. Under there. And now getting up getting up this wall is pretty hairy. And One of the reasons it's pretty hairy is there's a, a number of places up here where if you do something wrong, if you time your jump wrong, I'll get the jump wrong, you'll go into an infinite death loop. This bit isn't too bad. There's no pixel perfect jumps in this one. Or the next screen, actually. And the trick with the next screen is just timing some of your jumps right. Jump off this platform to the next. And this, you follow him along. And then you've got to do a vertical jump and a jump to the left straight afterwards. And here you need to jump and jump and jump again and then stop jumping. You want to jump again through here. I think this is the hardest room left in the game and the hardest room of getting up this east wall piece. You've got to do that one perfect, as you can see. From where I took off and landed, you need to do that one pretty much pixel perfect. That one you don't. But I think that previous one, if you don't get a pixel perfect, there's one of those jumps, there's one jump in this that if you get wrong, you go into an infinite death loop. I think you just drop down to the next screen and die. And you don't have to do that one pixel perfect, as you can see. Now remember when I completed this, because I, I complete it and then do the walkthrough, I was feeling pretty good at this point, thinking I might do it. And then that happened. I was a bit annoyed with myself at doing that. And as I say, when I classified these rooms, I actually classified the emergency generator as easy, and I died. And there's another room later on where I died that I also classified as easy. This room's pretty difficult. There's one... This, this first off bit, you just need to get right and practice a little bit. It's this bit here, because you've got to avoid that yellow Batman going up and down. So what you need to do is walk off that platform when he's at the bottom, and then you, you avoid him when you go past just like that. And the next room, of course, is the infamous attic. I had the attic bug. If I hadn't put the pork in that fixed this game, if I try to continue, certain rooms would kill me. Which would actually make the game incredibly difficult. I'm not... I don't know if the attic bug stops you from being able to complete the game, but it would make it incredibly hard. What you don't want to do is jump up into that flashing aeroplane piece up above you, because that'll kill you. Now, this next room always gives me a scare. Ah! Always nearly walk into that set of shears, that baddie that will kill you, the yellow baddie at the top. Now, we're not doing too bad here. Out the back door and down to the yacht and the tool shed. And the beach. The beach is quite a difficult room to do. First thing you've got to remember is don't jump for the first time the rope swings, otherwise, you'll end up with an arrow in the head. And the way I do this is just Drop onto there, turn around, and you've just got to learn where to jump from, obviously, pretty much where I was. You don't have to go back, because you can jump onto the, the rope as it swings back across. There we go. And the yacht. These aren't too bad. Once you once you've figured out how to do them, these these rooms aren't too bad at all. One thing you do need to remember is the uh, the bottom platform there at the bottom of the stairway is a conveyor belt. So when you get on that, you'll keep going to the right. So time it right so you can jump over that 
paddy, and then you follow the saw to get the oil can. Jump up. Get the ship's wheel. And then here, you want to move right back so you're there to jump up. And you want to jump, jump vertically, turn around and jump over the body. That takes a bit of practice as well. Now here, when you... there's... there's... Oh, go back. There's the place to stand and do a, do a vertical jump so you can get the a pixel perfect where you jump off to be able to land there, where I did. And you need to jump over the flag. That's quite a difficult set of rooms to do without losing a life. There's no one jump too hard, but there's a lot of hard ones in a row. And now the tool shed. It took me a while to work out the tool shed. This first jump doesn't have to be pixel perfect, but you want to time it. So you want to time it so you can jump over to that first platform and then drop down. So you don't want the razor killing you or dropping down again here onto the, the saw. So that's the way to do that. And then jump over the saw and jump onto this platform. And then the next thing to get right is where you stand. So you want to stand just there to jump over to the next platform. And then you'll be perfect for just jumping over all the platforms. Obviously that bent nail at the top of the tool shed will kill you if you hit your head on it. So we're nearly there, 63 objects doing pretty well. There's a few to pick up on our way up to the top of the roof, but that's all we need to do. Go across the top of the roof, get all the objects then, and back to the start. This is the first lot to pick up on the way, in the cold store. So get that one, then go down to the bottom and collect them. Those two kind of middly ones are hard to get. You can do them with a well-timed jump, which I'll show you in a second when we get back in there. And I must admit, actually, you'll you'll see how I practice this room versus how I the route I take now. By the way, I I do this the cold stuff. So you want to get that object. Actually, what I'm going to do is go back onto the right-hand side platform, go out the room and come back in, because for those last two objects, I always know how to time it doing it that way. So that's the way I always do it. So you don't jump on the first swing, you jump on the second swing. I can only lose one more life. I think I was getting pretty sweaty palms at this point in the game. There's still a way to go. Because when I've done this, you won't have seen every room. The one room missing will have been the entrance to Hades. Let's get that one. Whatever you do, to touch the bottom of that stairway that's going up, because that will kill you. Now, in this next room, there's a few arrows, but you can make the first two jumps, I think, and then you need to pause. So, ah, no, the first jump, then you need to pause two more. The good thing about the arrows is that you get that noise when you when you hear the arrow. These aren't too hard to get these objects. You do need to do a, a standing jump, which is always slightly more difficult to time than a running jump.
but onward and upward. There we have the conservatory roof. And the next room, of course, is the Norman Looney, which is a pun on, imagine the name of the game, the, the Latin name of that. This is one of the rooms I marked down as easy when I graded them all, when I was practicing. And as you'll see in a second, that was a bit naive. <sighs> yeah. When I was a kid, I could do this room every single time. Never had to worry about it. I remember I'd always I always actually head up to the roof first. I always thought the roof was the most interesting part. I liked Hunchback by Ocean, the uh, Hunchback game. It's one of the first games I actually ever got. I think I got it not long after I got my Spectrum, and that was one of my favourite games for a long time. I used to play for ages. I used to be able to do the uh, the jumping onto the rope on the I think the second screen on Hunchback. Jumping onto the rope's really 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 hard. You've got to get pixel perfect. And I could do it every time. I, I played on the game so much, I actually thought it was easy. And now when I play it, I find it almost impossible. But the fact that this game had ropes and kind of guards moving up and down and looked a lot like turrets and things like that, looked a lot like Hunchback. I think I liked that about it, which is why I, I always used to head up, up this way. Now, in this one, you've got to time the jump right, so that yellow baddie is at the bottom, or just moving up, um, when you jump, and that, cause that means that when you go onto that conveyor belt, you're okay. We must perform a Kurtifleeg. Now, a Kurtifleeg was something from a comic that Matthew Smith used to like. Somebody's Fabulous Freaky Furry Brothers, or something like that. Um, and apparently it was the hour act of lying on your back and sticking your hands and feet in the air and wiggling them or something like that. Watchtower's pretty hard. They, those three objects on the on the right there, you need to get your jumps just right. Yeah, you want to jump from there to get both of those two on the right. And then you need to then you need to jump back at the right position as well. So you need to jump back right from there without hitting the bird. As you can see, some, sometimes I was I was really taking my time when I was doing this. I was really, really taking it slowly and watching what was happening. I hadn't practiced these rooms at the top of the house as ne anywhere near as much as I practiced some of the other ones, some of the earlier ones that I do. I can't die again at this point either, so you'll have to forgive me for being a bit slow. I was being very patient, making sure I did it. I'm sure my palms were really sweaty with the anticipation of actually completing Jet Set Willy at this point. It's 80 objects. There's two in this room and one in the next room, which will be all 83. Now, having completed this, I'm not sure. I always used to say that Manic Miner was my favourite platform game. But I'm not sure if it's now Jet Set Willy. It's just such a good game. I really, really enjoyed learning all the rooms and completing it. And it is possible. I'm proving it's possible in this. So, if I was anyone else, I'd give it a try. I did start playing Jet Set Willy 2 after I finished this, but found it was different. The game engine's different. It's not just the way the rooms are stored. The jumps are different, so you can't do the vertical jump to get a pixel perfect jump. He, he moves uh, one pixel forward. But now we've got all the objects and we're on our trip back to the master bedroom to get past Maria and finally get to bed. This is probably the trickiest room navigating this again from right to left. 
again, as I said before, what you've got to do is time it so that you jump as that blue head is just starting to move up. He's pretty much in the same position when he starts to move up as he is when you get there, maybe a bit further away. You've also got to time it so you're able to safely jump over that ballerina rabbit. Sometimes when I've played the game, I've waited so long for an opportunity to jump over there. The pause, there's an automatic pause that comes on. And that's it, there's nothing really hazardous in the way now. One more buddy to jump over. Of course, as everyone knows, well, he doesn't go to bed when he finishes. No, Maria, I can finally go to bed. But he doesn't, and off he goes. So there you go, that's Jet Set Willy. That's the end of it. But you know what? I think that was so good. Let's watch it all again. So there we go, that's Jet Set Willy, and one thing I've just realised is that I didn't give you the backstory. So the backstory is that Willy's had a huge party, had loads of guests, and they've trashed his house, and so he has to go and clean up before his housekeeper, Maria, will let him go to bed. 
So all that's left to say is thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I did making it. And until next time, happy gaming!